Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're going to take a look at the Ryzen 5 3600. And thanks to our Patreon community, we were able to purchase this processor for a reasonably early review. And we could do that rather than waiting for AMD to provide them at a later date. Not quite sure when AMD is providing these CPUs, but yeah, rather than wait, we've gone out and bought one. So a big thank you to everyone who supports us directly. So the Ryzen 5 3600 is a 6-core 12-thread CPU that clocks between 3.6GHz and 4.2GHz. It features a 32MB L3 cache and a 65W TDP. Included in the package is the Wraith Stealth Cooler, and AMD has set the MSRP at just $200. So it's the same launch price as the R5 2600, which was $20 less than the original R5 1600. The primary competition for the R5 3600 comes from the Intel Core i5-9600, the non-K model, which costs $213 US, but since we don't have that part and it doesn't appear to be on sale, the more expensive 9600K will have to do. It costs $255 US and it doesn't include a box cooler. Therefore, in terms of pricing, Intel's already on the back foot, so it'll be interesting to see how they stack up when it comes to the benchmarks. Speaking of which, the MSI X570 creation was used for testing. I know it's an overkill motherboard, it's certainly not necessary. A B450 board will work just fine, but I want to use the same test setup that I did for the other Ryzen processors. So this means the Ryzen 5 3600 was tested on the same X570 board, and it's been configured with the same DDR4 3200CL14 memory. Oh, and I used the included box cooler for the review of this CPU as well. Then the 8th and 9th gen Intel Core processors were benchmarked on the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra using the same DDR4 3200CL14 memory, but they were cooled using the Corsair Hydro Series H115i RGB Platinum 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler. Please note the Intel CPUs are not TDP restricted, as that's not the out-of-the-box experience. So we're showing the absolute best case scenario for out-of-the-box performance with the Intel processors. But please note, I'll also be factoring in the cost of an aftermarket cooler for the Intel CPUs in the cost analysis at the end of this video, and it works out to be in AMD's favor to use the box cooler, as using an aftermarket solution really only boosts gaming performance by 1-2%. to Please note, I have removed the higher-end, more expensive CPUs, such as the 3900X, 9700K, 9900K, Threadripper 2920X, and Core i7-7900X, as they aren't really relevant when looking at a $200 CPU, but you can cross-reference the results from our earlier third-gen Ryzen review if you like. Finally, the graphics card of choice is the MSI Trio GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Okay, I think that covers everything. Let's get into the benchmark results. As usual, we'll start off with the Cinebench R20 multi-core test, and right away, I'm pretty blown away by the 3600's performance here. It matched the Ryzen 7 1800X with just over 3,600 points. Yep, the 3600 scored roughly 3,600 points. Amazing, but let's move on. This made it 4% faster than the 8700K, almost 20% faster than the 2600X, and 28% faster than the model it's replacing, the 2600. Then when compared to the R5 1600, the new 3600 is 45% faster. And that's pretty insane, in two years, AMD has increased performance at the $200 price point by almost 50%. The single core performance is equally impressive. Here the 3600 was just 4% slower than the 3700X, and that meant it was able to match the Core i5-9600K and just edge out the 8700K. Moving on to WinRAR, and here we see the R5-3600 looks very good, falling just short of the 8700K by a mere 4% margin. That made it 45% faster than the Core i7-7700K and Ryzen 7 2700X, so some pretty incredible gains here for the third gen Ryzen part. Again, this time when testing with 7-zip, we see the 3600 beating the 2700X. The compression performance really is nothing short of amazing, and it meant the 3600 was 14% faster than the 8700K. It did fall behind the older 8-core Ryzen processors in the decompression test, but even so, it was still 16% faster than the 8700K. For budding content creators, the R5 3600 will be a godsend. For just $200, it completed our 4K workload 4% faster than the 8700K, and while that's far from a significant margin, remember the 8700K is a $360 US dollar processor. Interestingly, the 3600 does come up short again against the 8700K in the latest version of the V-Ray benchmark. Here it was 6% slower, 
But again, given the difference in price, that's hardly a bad result for AMD. Still, when compared to the R5 2600, it was 17% faster and a whopping 32% faster than the R5 1600. Then moving along once again, AMD's new 6-core CPU trailed the 8700K by a small margin in the Corona benchmark. So given the difference in price, this is still a very good result for the 3600. It did manage to pull ahead for the Blender test. Here it was just a single percent faster than the 8700K, so basically the same result, but that is still clearly a very good result for AMD's new $200 desktop processor. But perhaps more impressive are the total system power consumption figures we recorded when running the Blender benchmark. As you can see, the R5 3600 consumed the same amount of power as the quad-core Core i7 7700K and only slightly more than the 9600K. Now, you might think consuming slightly more power than 9600K isn't that impressive, but remember, the 3600 was almost 40% faster than the Core i5 processor in this test. So in terms of power efficiency, it's extremely impressive. Okay, time for gaming, and first up we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And here the 3600 slightly edged out the 8700K's 1% low result, despite being a few frames slower on average. Still, you can very much call what we're seeing here 8700K light performance for the new Ryzen 5 3600. So again, that is a big win for AMD as far as I'm concerned. Like what we saw with the 3900X and 3700X review, the third gen Ryzen processors do slip a little in this title at 1440p, and this is also true for the R5 3600. Here it's 6% slower than the 8700K, not a massive margin, but normally you'd expect things to close up at 1440p. The Battlefield 5 results are again a little disappointing, though I have to remind myself the 3600 isn't competing with the 8700K, its target is the 9600K, and here it improves 1% low performance by 23%, so an easy win for the new Ryzen 5 processor. Even at 1440p, despite the 9600K appearing quicker when looking at the average frame rate, the 1% low performance of the 3600 was actually 18% higher, and this allowed it to deliver a smoother and more consistent gaming experience. Next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here the 3600 matched the 9600K, which is a very solid result given the 9600K costs more and requires you to purchase a cooler separately. The 1440p results were much the same, the 9600K did creep ahead by a few frames, but overall performance was competitive, and the 1% low performance of the 3600 was a good bit faster than any of the second gen Ryzen parts. Moving on to The Division 2, and here at 1080p, the 3600 edged out the 9600K and made a significant step forward from not just the 2600X, but also the 2700X. Interestingly though, this time at 1440p, the 3600 was able to pull further ahead of the 9600K, namely when looking at the 1% low performance. In fact, the 3600 matched the 3700X, and that meant it was a good bit faster than the 2700X and 8700K. As we've come to expect from Ryzen, the performance in Far Cry New Dawn was a bit disappointing, at least relative to the competing Intel processors, and overall performance was still very good and the gameplay was incredibly smooth. Even at 1440p, the 3600 is still well down on the 9600K, particularly when looking at the 1% low results. Performance in World War Z was also low relative to the Intel CPUs, but of course with well over 100 FPS at all times, it probably doesn't matter too much in this instance. Interestingly, the Ryzen CPUs create some kind of performance bottleneck in this title, and we see what looks to be a 135 FPS cap at 1440p. It's very odd that, considering the Intel CPUs pushed up to 150 FPS. The Ryzen 5 3600 was solid in Rage 2, averaging 160 FPS, and this meant it wasn't a great deal slower than the 9600K. Moreover, the 3600 was fast enough to find the limits of the RTX 2082 at 1440p, though this was true of almost all the CPUs tested. This time, when testing with Hitman 2, we see the 3600 was 7% slower than the 9600K when looking at the average frame rate. Not a massive difference, but again, this isn't a great title for the Ryzen CPUs. We find similar results at 1440p, though here the 3600 basically matched the 1% low performance of the 9600K, and overall the gaming experience was indistinguishable between these two CPUs. Finishing up the gaming benchmarks, we have Total War Three Kingdoms, and here the 3600 offered stronger 1% low performance than the 9600K, but it did also provide slightly lower average frame rates. But once again, the jump to 1440p with the RTX 2080 Ti, we see the performance margins are neutralized, and here the 9600K and 3600 enable the same level of performance. 
As was the case with the 3700X and 3900X, there's very little overclocking headroom to speak of with the 3600. The best I could do with an all-in-one liquid cooler was a 4.2 GHz all-core overclock. So again, you're best off enabling PBO plus the Auto OC feature in the Ryzen Master software. This boosted the Cinebench R20 multi-core score by a mere 4%. Here we see that the PBO Plus Auto OC overclock improved the single core score by just 1.5%, so I suspect most won't bother with overclocking as it's not really worth the added heat. Speaking of which, let's check out the thermal performance of the included Wraith Stealth box cooler. With the Wraith Stealth installed, the 3600 maintained a 4GHz clock speed out of the box during a 1 hour long blender stress test. This is an extreme stress test, so the fact that it peaked at just 80 degrees is actually pretty good, especially given it was virtually silent. You can enable PBO with the box cooler, but it won't do much as you're already near the thermal limit, so basically we gained just 25MHz for a 4 degree increase in temperature. That being the case, I don't recommend using PBO with the box cooler. With a decent cooler installed, temperatures were dropped quite significantly. You really don't need something as extreme as the Corsair Hydro Series H115i 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler, but I did use that for the 3700X and I wanted to make these results comparable for future content. Anyway, with the AIO installed, the stock temps dropped to just 62 degrees, and now by default the 3600 ran at 4125 MHz, so a 3% auto overclock. Then with PBO enabled, we got another 85 MHz, and this increased the load temp to 68 degrees, which is obviously still very cool. Okay, so now that we've seen how the new Ryzen 5 3600 performs in a range of applications and games, it's time to work out just how good it is in terms of value. So let's go do that right now. For the cost per frame data, we're adding the cost of the cooler to the Intel systems. I believe a $45 budget for the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition is very reasonable. With those adjustments made, the Core i5-9600K comes in at a total cost of $295 US, and that means the cost per frame figure is $2.18, which places it on par with the Ryzen 7 2700X. The Ryzen 5 3600 comes out significantly more affordable at just $1.53 per frame, as it delivers a similar level of performance, but costs almost $100 less. This makes the 3600 better value than the 2600X at its current $195 asking price, though it is 18% more costly than the vanilla 2600. Even so, given the improvements in efficiency and the absolutely monstrous performance uplift in productivity workloads, I feel it's going to be easy for consumers to justify that small price premium. Well, there you have it. As predicted, the Ryzen 5 3600 offers a tremendous amount of value and because it just sips power, it'll work on even the most basic B350 motherboard, providing it receives the necessary BIOS update. Alternatively, for new builders, you can grab my favorite B450 board, the MSI B450 Tomahawk, and you'll have a killer combo for a smidgen over $300 US. And that's, that's basically what you'll pay for a 9600K with a mid-range cooler. Then in the future, your options are aplenty. The Ryzen 7 3700X, the Ryzen 9 3900X, or maybe even the 16 core 3950X. Who knows what secondhand deals will be available on these parts in a few years time. This is why I've been such a big proponent of AMD's AM4 platform. Those who bought in two years ago with an affordable B350 motherboard and say the Ryzen 5 1600, for example, you now have the option of slotting in the R5 3600 for up to a 35% performance boost in games and at least a 45% boost in applications. Though, as we saw in WinRAR, it can be over a 100% boost. But as I alluded to a moment ago, even for those building a new PC from the ground up, the R5 3600 looks to be the best option. It absolutely smoked the Core i5-9600K in every single application benchmark we ran, and worst case, it matches its single core performance. You get 12 threads opposed to a six, so it's no doubt going to age better, but this time you don't have to roll the dice on Ryzen's longevity, as it's faster today. And sure, the 9600K was a little faster in a few of the games tested, but the 3600 was miles faster, where you'll absolutely notice it. So this one's pretty cut and dry for me. Unless Intel cuts pricing quite heavily, I really can't see a reason to consider their processors, particularly the mid-range offerings such as the 9600K. And that's going to do it for this one. Up next, I'll have some B350 motherboard testing to see just how well these third-gen Ryzen processors work on entry-level boards. I'll be throwing 
probably this one, definitely the 3700X and 3900X at those boards. Obviously, if they work, this little guy will as well. But anyway, keep an eye out for that. It should be pretty good. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button for us and you can subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hire Unboxed and you want to make sure we can test things like this by buying them, then you can yeah jump over to our Patreon page and get access to all the good stuff we do over there, like our exclusive Discord server. That's really cool. We have a monthly live stream with Tim and myself. That's also a lot of fun. We'll be doing that uh, probably in the next week or two for, for this month. But anyway, enough from me. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.